Nuts. Thankfully, that is behind us. Nothing but yes. blue skies all day long. <laughs> Erica. That's right, Kaidi. Um, in fact, one of those uh, tornadoes that was confirmed in Pennsylvania outside of Philadelphia was an EF3. That's the strongest tornado that we have had in this general area in the tri-state and including Pennsylvania in over a decade. So uh, it certainly was uh, something that's out of the ordinary for us here in the Northeast. In our weather headlines for tonight, we're going to see the crowd cloud cover increase as a little weak disturbance approaches and it will bring us some showers as we head into the afternoon tomorrow. We will dry out quickly though and that's how we'll start the work week. Of course, it is the first week of August already starting tomorrow. Temperatures are going to stay comfortably warm. It's not your typical August kind of feeling weather. 71 right now in Central Park with scattered clouds. Same deal in the Bronx, 70 with those scattered cloud cover, but uh, the clouds are starting to thicken as you head to the west. 63 right now in Morristown with uh, lots of clouds overhead, but uh, that is going to be a trend that we see moving across the entire tri-state area. One thing we won't see until much later tomorrow is the rain, and it's partly because we have such low dew points right now. When you don't have a lot of moisture at the surface, then the rain will evaporate sometimes before it reaches the ground, and I think that that will be our scenario as we head into tomorrow afternoon. So no rain is showing up right now on our close in view of satellite and radar, but the wider view does show that storm system approaching. Again, it's small. It's relatively weak. Some of the showers that are moving uh, through the D.C. metro area and through West Virginia will make their approach from the south as well. So not a great beach day tomorrow. If you do want to hit the beach, make sure that you get there early and leave early as well before the rain develops. Highs will be in the mid to upper 70s, uh, two to three foot waves and that moderate to high rip current risk. You can see the wave um, direction, the arrow direction here, indicating a strong onshore flow. And that is one of the components that's gonna give us that rip current risk tomorrow. But the rain does hold off until the later afternoon. You can see just a few spotty showers here on Futurecast, but after sunset, more rain arriving, maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder. You see those oranges and yellows there, indicating the potential for some heavier rain. But we clear it out by Monday morning, and the three-day forecast is looking pretty good for that. Lots of sunshine to greet us as we start the new work week, and that humidity is not going to surge back either. Coming up in the seven-day forecast, we'll talk about how long we'll get to dry things out. Back to you okay. in the month of July. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. But first, we're going to look ahead over the next day or so. With the clouds increasing tonight as a weak disturbance approaches us, no rain until at least tomorrow afternoon, most likely. Though our western suburbs could see a couple showers before we get too late into the afternoon. There is the possibility of a rumble of thunder as well as this weak disturbance passes through. By Monday, we're back to sunshine and it will be a refreshingly breezy day as well. So more on that heat or lack thereof. We only had four days in the month of July with 90 degrees or higher. On average, we have six in a typical year, so not too far behind normal, but compared to last year, wow, 14 days of 90 degrees or hotter in July of 2020. And by the way, uh, the month of June this year had more 90 degree days than the month of July did. So uh, we definitely got used to the heat early in the season. And then in July, we had very little heat. In fact, remember 4th of July weekend, this green box sticking out here, Saturday of 4th of July weekend, it was only 66 degrees because we had that onshore flow, the clouds and showers. Now tonight, the clouds are going to increase, but again, it's going to stay dry through the overnight hours, a low of 66 degrees in the suburbs. A few pl uh, places might touch the upper 50s overnight tonight, but it's not going to be quite as uh, cool and uh, it's, it's going to start to feel a little bit more humid as we head into the day tomorrow because some of those rain showers that fall tomorrow are going to evaporate before they hit the ground. So that will help to moisten up the atmosphere just a little bit. It's still going to be comfortable temperature wise with a high of 79 tomorrow, but afternoon showers and thunderstorms will start to move in. I do think they're going to be able to get in the baseball game, though. So if you have tickets for tomorrow's Reds game at City Field, do not get a refund or anything like that, go ahead and head to the ballpark. Just be prepared for the possibility of a shower arriving maybe by the seventh inning stretch. 
Temperatures will be in the upper 70s for first pitch and then about 75, 76 degrees for that seventh inning. So we're not looking at a ton of rain here. Notice that this ends at 11 p.m. on Sunday, only about a third of an inch in the city. So thankfully, we've already had plenty of rain in the month of July. We don't really need any more. Uh, so the fact that we're going to keep that total well below one inch is good news. And the pollen will be impacted just slightly by that little chance of rain. So the pollen count will remain in the moderate range. Uh, I do think it's going to start to get higher as we head into this work week because we don't have a lot of rain in the forecast. You can see oh, that the rain will hold off tomorrow until the later afternoon. A few breaks in the clouds as we're waking up. High temperatures just below 80 degrees and you will notice a slight uptick in the humidity as well. In the seven day forecast, 